Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to look at the psychology of Griffith from the anime Berserk. He's known as one of the most complex and well-oriented characters in anime by every anime fanatic. But I have yet to see a video that dives into the psychological reasons of why this is. Before we dive into an interpretation of Griffith from the theories of Carl Jung, let's take a look at the characteristics of Griffith. He's presented in Berserk as an ideal character. One that reaches the archetypes of an ideal leader, friend, and almost an ideal human. Griffith from a young age has had the confidence and believes that he's destined to have his own kingdom and destined for greatness. His psychological growth has been based on this presupposition. He speaks, looks, and performs as if he's the ideal leader and someone beyond human comprehension. And as such, others treat him like a savior and a godlike figure. The people around him praise and respect him, and he speaks with clarity, accomplishes the impossible, and carries himself as a mysterious yet capable and strong warrior. Now we must ask the question, why is this character in Berserk? And what is the purpose of this character in a psychological sense? Berserk as an anime displays the essence of archetypes and displays core psychological concepts that are present in each individual's lives and examines it to its extremes. Through understanding Griffith, I hope to give you some understanding of your own life and your own psyche and how to navigate it. Griffith has a steady progression and is the leader of the Band of the Hawks, a mercenary group. They progressively become closer to Griffith's goal of being a leader of his own kingdom. Throughout this, Griffith's psyche can be conceptualized as striving towards the ideal nature of what a human and a leader should be. He's not interested in what others are interested in and puts himself on the top of the hierarchy of competence among his peers and his enemies. For example, the members of his group are all interested in something. Some are interested in women, sex, pleasure, others are interested in material goods and attention, and most have no alternative goal rather than the simple pleasures of materials and pleasures related to things or the acknowledgement of Griffith himself. Griffith's psyche thrives off of this. He holds himself to a higher degree of idealization he sees himself as having a purpose to rule, and as such, shuns away such pleasures for the purpose of his idealistic goals. He thus orients his psyche and his body towards calculated moves on how he can achieve his goals of obtaining his own kingdom and his self-conceptualization of the ideal self, which follows his ego. Throughout this, Griffith displays the nature of humans to strive towards a goal, and in the process, creates an ego that is oriented towards such a goal. Jung defines the ego as the understanding of how you consciously perceive who you are. And in this sense, Griffith sees himself as an individual destined to rule and one that supersedes the normal human imperatives to seek pleasure. Griffith is initially presented as a charismatic and visionary leader, inspiring loyalty and devotion from his followers. He's driven by a desire for greatness and is willing to take bold risks in order to achieve his goals. However, as the story progresses, we begin to see a glimpse of his shadow side which Jung defines as the part of oneself that the individual does not consciously integrate into their life and thus is shunned away into the unconscious. He becomes increasingly manipulative and calculating, using people as pawns in his quest for power. He also becomes increasingly narcissistic, believing that he's destined for greatness and deserving of worship from those around him. The biggest and most influential part of this anime is the transition of Griffith after Guts decides to leave him. This transition can help us understand about a universal psychological phenomenon that is present in every human. Carl Jung defines this phenomenon as the dark night of the soul, which he referred to as a period of intense psychological turmoil or spiritual crisis. Jung believed that the dark night of the soul was a natural and necessary part of the process of individuation, which is the journey towards psychological wholeness and self-realization. It is a time of profound inner conflict and chaos, marked by a sense of disillusionment, despair, and a loss of meaning. The individual may feel overwhelmed by their unconscious material, confronting their shadow, and facing the unknown aspects of their personality. They may feel like they are losing their sense of identity and purpose, and experience a sense of existential crisis. Jung saw this experience as a necessary step towards growth and transformation. He believed that the dark night of the soul was a period of psychic disintegration, a breakdown of the ego structure that holds us back from our true potential. He viewed it as an opportunity to confront our deepest fears, desires, and aspirations, and to integrate the unconscious parts of our psyche into conscious awareness. Jung conceptualized this through his interactions with his clinical patients, who were often faced with this turmoil, an event in their life that broke them, and as such, let out their shadow side and in an unhealthy manner. Let me give you a contemporary example. 
Let's say you see yourself as a kind and non-violent person, which you can define as your ego. Say you have a girlfriend and you perceive your relationship to be great. You are planning on marriage and hope to start a family. One day after work, you find her in your house having an affair. Suddenly, out of an instinct of rage, you strike her and the person she's with and violently attack that person to the brink of death. You stop, then look at yourself and leave the house in a sense of disbelief, not only at the circumstances, but at your own actions. This is a great example of the concept of the dark night of the soul and how it brings forth your shadow to light. You perceived yourself as a non-violent person and lived your life accordingly. And that critical moment of dark night of the soul, which came in the form of betrayal by your girlfriend, brought forth a reaction that is extreme and one that you did not expect. This is what I would define as the extreme shadow. Berserk also portrays this concept in an exceptional manner. Griffith holds an idea of himself, a person who's capable of garnering respect and loyalty of any individual. He sees himself as the ideal human, a leader to be admired, and a person who's beyond the comprehension of average human beings. But when Guts decides to leave him, it is the first interaction that cripples Griffith's understanding of himself and humans. He's facing the dark night of the soul. No matter his attempts, Guts decides to leave him, and as such, Griffith's shadow comes to light. A person who had limited his aggressive tendencies, and a person who saw himself as devoted to his goal and having a purpose, begins to dissolve into the depths of human nature. Griffith saw himself as the ideal, who stayed away from pleasures of sex and avoided the consequences of human imperfections. But with this betrayal of Guts, the things that he pushed aside, which became a part of his shadow, started to come to light in an extreme manner. A great example of this is his meeting with the princess. He takes control of her and lets go of his sexual desires in an aggressive and primitive manner, which is a metaphor for the shadows that he has hidden away and that are coming to light in this moment. The pleasures of sex and women, which he saw as mere disturbances to the ideal version of himself, a leader of his own kingdom, now came to light. Without integrating these desires in a healthy manner into his life, this catastrophic event within his psyche brought out his shadows in the most extreme manner. Right now, in this moment, his goals did not exist. He forgets his ideal and succumbs to his shadow in a, in a primitive manner, regardless of the consequences. He begins to let go of his sexual desires and lets go of the need to follow his ideal. This brings forth another dark night of the soul, which is his capture and torture. The psychological trauma that Griffith undergoes during his imprisonment and torture can be interpreted as a manifestation of the psychic disintegration and chaos that Jung associates with the dark night of the soul. It puts him in a place where his conceptualization and the way in which he understood himself and saw himself completely disappeared. A man who was once a leader, filled with perfections, is now a slave, filled with scars and trauma. To overcome this event, often individuals resort to the shadow and the extremes of the shadow. In this instance, Griffith begins to give his life no meaning. Meaninglessness confronts him as opposed to seeing himself as a savior and as a leader destined to rule. To combat this, Griffith strays away from rationality and seeks his shadow for comfort to give back the power that he lost to his identity. You can see this present in the violation of Casca in front of Guts. It's an intense scene, but one that shows a visual display of his shadow at its extreme and how this in itself can give a person who is faced with nihilism, meaninglessness, and despair back their identity that they once cherished. A sense of control and dominance. As a man, the most extremes of punishments or evils is to see the woman that you admire be violated by another man. And it is a part of Griffith's darkest shadows. And as he succumbs to his shadows in its extreme, the man who once saw himself as pure, as a leader to be admired, becomes the total opposite for guts. Griffith is now a man to be despised and to be killed. Often humans lack an understanding of their capacity for evil. An example of this is well demonstrated in the book Ordinary Man, which explains how normal and ordinary men from Germany became Nazi soldiers who shot and killed innocent children, women, and men in brutal fashion. Those men too thought that they were not capable of such actions, and as individuals they were incapable of doing such things under any circumstances. What this does is, it denies the reality of human nature and the evils that persist within your unconscious self. As people, we are quick to tell our children, you can change the world, in that they can leave a positive impact on the world. But it is the rare parent who informs their children that they are also capable of great evil and the destruction of themselves, their family, their community, and at times the world itself. We can learn a lot about the psychological nature of humans through Berserk and through Griffith.
No matter your race, gender, ideas of life, and religious beliefs, you are destined to face the dark night of the soul, or an event that brings forth chaos into your life. And this will inevitably bring out the hidden shadows that you have refused to integrate into your life in a conscious manner. It may come in the form of a breakup, or a betrayal by a loved one, or the death of a father or a mother, or even the loss of a job. When this does occur, you must note that there are three ways of overcoming this despair and suffering. The first is to run away from it and become an individual who is a slave to life's suffering, such as Griffith in his prison tortured by a man who he once saw as not even worthy of his presence. The next is to succumb to your shadow in its extremes and become a primitive and animalistic individual who hates life and despises the gifts that life presents to him. You then begin to seek revenge and seep into nihilism. And the last is to be conscious of the dark night of the soul and await its coming and overcome it through the integration of your shadow in a manner that helps you recover and become a person who moves towards wholeness.